You are now operating a state-of-the-art road watering and dust suppression tanker and your ability to operate it safely and efficiently will give you and your whole team impressive results. We will deal with this operator training in three steps, pre-start, operation and park up. As a great operator, you will know that normal operational states inform all your senses and a great pre-start is about familiarising yourself with the visuals, smells, sounds and operational feel of the machine in such a way that anything that is out of normal stands out immediately. It's all about training your senses. And as the Volvo truck and Felco tanker delivers the very latest in efficiency and safety, more experienced operators may in fact need to retrain their brain and relearn driving skills around Volvo's advanced operator safety assistance features. And more on that later. Back to the pre-start. The truck and tanker do not usually require any field lubrication. However, your daily walk around will involve checking coolant and lubrication reservoir levels. Let's start up front. Open the bonnet and check the engine oil and coolant levels here. Run your eyes over everything and when you are satisfied, close the bonnet. Look under the truck for any leaks and check the front fan sprays for any damage. Clean the windscreen and mirrors and any indicator lights or safety signage if needed. Now step back and check for overhead damage. Between the cab and the tanker, visually check the water cannon, taking special note of the camera. Here, we also check the hydraulic oil reservoir levels. They must be in range between the black overfill and the red underfill lines. Down the side, check the suction hoses are all clipped in securely. At the rear, look for loose fittings or worn or damaged hoses or assemblies. If operating in muddy conditions or using creek or dam water, it's advised to pop the cam locks on the end of the spray bars or fan jets to visually check for obstructions. Now check that the retractable hose reel is rolled on reasonably tight and that the hose drum is locked. Up the other side, again, check all the suction hoses are secured and under the front of the tank, purge the water level sensor. Do this more often if using dam or creek water. Check the toolbox and then turn on the battery isolator before climbing up into the operator seat. Familiarise yourself with the key functions. Lock and unlock are obvious. However, be aware that it takes a second unlock action to unlock the offside door. Push once for the driver's door and again for both doors. Below them is a guide me button. All position, courtesy, side marker and direction indicators as well as the interior lighting is then activated. The last button is the panic alarm. Hold it for two seconds and the truck horn and hazard lights will activate. Hold the button in for a few seconds to deactivate. Adjust the seat and mirrors to suit your operating style and to optimise for safest operation. Upon ignition, you need to be aware of all the dash warning lights and alarms. This is best achieved by studying the operator's manual in the overhead glove box. The Felco tanker monitors and controls are to your left. On the dash is the rear view and water cannon video monitor. Familiarise yourself with the selection of camera views. You can monitor both simultaneously or each camera view separately. Around to the left is your main water spraying control panel. It is laid out intuitively with the spray switches in the same position on the panel as if you were standing facing the rear of the truck. Each switch controls an individual fan spray or spray bar and spray bars can be full width or half width and left or right selectable. The water level gauge indicates the level in the water tank and the light will strobe up and down once the tank is nearing empty. Below the level gauge is the water pump on off switch and the pump speed controller. This variable control allows you to quite literally dial in the amount of water applied. Please note that on engagement of the PTO, the engine is limited to 1500 RPM you can now dial the pump speed up and down to adjust the water output. To increase or decrease your ground speed, select manual on the gear selector and then toggle the gears up and down. Familiarise yourself with the on steering wheel controls. On the right side is the driver information display and entertainment controls. And on the left is the cruise control and phone commands. The CC button activates the cruise control and the ACC button switches to adaptive cruise control. The toggle switch in the centre allows the operator to set, then increase or decrease the selected speed in either cruise control mode. The button to the right of the CC button allows you to alter the following distance for the adaptive cruise control. 
either cruise control is disengaged by the O button by touching the brake pedal or by increasing the engine brake settings. The reset button will reactivate the cruise control back to the last set speed. The ECO button changes the permissible overspeed limit. On startup, it defaults to 5 km per hour, but can be user set between 3 and 8 km overspeed. The auxiliary brake lever is on the right side of the steering column. Forward to the windscreen is the automatic position, which is activated by the brake pedal to blend engine and wheel braking for maximised safety and braking efficiency. This is the recommended position for the auxiliary brake. For more advanced options, it's absolutely vital that you consult the operator's manual. Light switches are located to the right side of the dash near the driver's door. The gear selector houses several controls, all related to gear selection. Move the whole selector lever to select forward or reverse, automated or manual. And in manual, the plus and minus buttons on the side of the lever allow the operator to select their desired gear. If you are bogged or operating in slippery conditions, the power divider switch on the dash will activate the diff locks between the axles and set the truck up for maximum traction. Do not operate in this state when traction conditions improve. The traction control switch enables traction control to be turned off and back on as needed. The truck's air suspension can be adjusted using the control module located by the driver's seat. Let's move on to operation. Experienced operators will need to be aware of the advanced safety and driver assistance technologies built into the Volvo truck. Here is an overview of just some of those. Inattention, distraction is a growing concern in the traffic environment and loss of forward road vision in combination with an unexpected event will normally result in an accident. Volvo Truck's collision warning with emergency braking will support the driver in these critical situations by focusing the driver's attention towards the traffic in front of the vehicle. If a critical situation is detected, for example, slow or stopped traffic ahead, the head-up display on the windshield will be illuminated. If there is no reaction from the driver, the head-up display starts to flash, supported by a loud audible alarm. If still no reaction from the driver, the truck's brakes are applied with a low brain force. Finally, if still no reaction from the driver is detected, an emergency full braking is performed. By supporting the truck driver in being aware of the traffic situation ahead, many accidents can be avoided. If the driver unintentionally crosses a road marking, he is alerted by a buzzer. Volvo Truck's driver alert support is an extension of the lane keeping support system. In addition to lane position, the system continuously monitors the driver's steering behavior in order to assess the driver's attention and alertness level. The current status of the alertness is shown in a bar graph in the driver display. If the driver shows signs of inattention, fatigue or low alertness, the driver is notified by an acoustic signal as well as by an indication on the instrument panel. It's time for a break. Please read the operator's manual for a complete insight into all your truck features. But let's now prepare to travel to the worksite. Firstly, some overarching rules. Please ensure work beacons are active at all times if in the worksite and also ensure you know which channel and are always on the correct UHF channel as visibility and two-way communication is absolutely vital for safety. And as a rule, do not under any circumstances run the pump without water flowing through it. If you do, it will chop out the seals and require costly repairs. It's wise for you to familiarise yourself with the way the pump sounds, vibrates and feels to the touch when operating normally. At the rear of the tanker are a number of clearly labelled valves. The logic for any manually operated lever valve is that the handle will always align with the way the valve is directed, along the pipe for flow but across the pipe if closed or off. The air over pneumatic valves, located in less accessible locations, are operated remotely by these switches, located conveniently at the rear of the tanker frame. OK, let's get this tanker filled. There are two ways, hydrant or creek fill. You will already be in hydrant fill mode if you've been spraying before, as the valves remain in the same position for spraying and hydrant filling. With hydrant filling, attach a suction hose to the hydrant fill, open the hydrant fill valve on top of the tank by using the switch, and finally, open the valve under the rear of the truck to allow flow from the hydrant. Alternatively, if you are creek filling, connect your suction hoses, open the creek suction valve, open the primer tap, 
and give the hand primer pump a few strokes to prime it. Finally, back in the cab, engage the PTO. Turn on the pump and rotate the pump speed dial to 10. But please note that you will need to engage the cruise control and increase the engine RPM to 1500 revs to optimise fill times. Always fill the tanker by weight using your in-dash scales. And once filled, return the creek suction valve to the closed position, the tank valve to the open position, and close the creek and hydrant fill valves using the switches. Closing the fill valves is vital to prevent water being spilled out on the truck chassis during transit. For all creek filling and spray operations, you will need to engage the truck PTO by holding the switch in for a few seconds. Then turn on the pump and operate it at a low speed. It is best to go to the rear now and check that the pump sounds and feels normal. The pump should never be hot to touch. The hydraulic motor will be hot, but not the water pump. Next, turn on or off the nozzles that you're required to get the best result. Yellow duck bills are best for drier conditions. The parking brake is automatically released on throttle up if all doors are shut prior to gear selection. To reapply the parking brake, pull the park brake dash button to the end of its travel. The symbol on the dash will confirm if the park brake is released or engaged. Please note that the park brake is automatically engaged if a door is opened. It's vital to disengage the PTO whenever it's not required for pumping or spraying operations. It's also mandatory to turn off your work beacons when not in the actual work site. At the end of the shift or day, the shutdown is really just the reverse of the start up as far as checking for damage. Then refuel and check the add blue, but only do so with the engine stopped and ignition turned off. Finally, check that the PTO and pump is off as well as all flashing and work lights. Lock all hatches, toolboxes, doors and windows and check that the truck is safely secured to minimise theft and vandalism opportunities. And please note, you must wait a minimum of two minutes between turning the ignition off and finally isolating the battery. Thanks for engaging in this operational overview. Any questions, please talk to your supervisor.